Hi, my name is Mary Shepard and I'm a PMM on the Microsoft 365 Modern Work Team. Office apps in Microsoft 365 help people and organizations create their best work, collaborate more effectively and drive efficiencies. In this session, we'll focus on ways that Office apps help people create amazing work. To learn more about collaboration, please also check out our other session, Office Apps and Teams, enabling virtual collaboration for the future of our hybrid work environment. No matter what your organization does, you are constantly communicating stories. It could be anything from an email to a coworker, to a critical presentation to a customer, or even the goals of a team building exercise. You need to be able to focus on your story and tell it clearly and powerfully. To help you do this, we've invested in AI and flexible ways of working in Office. For the first part of this session, we'll show you how these experiences help you focus on what matters most. In the second part, we'll highlight how Office helps you tell your story powerfully. Let's start with helping you focus on what matters most. I'm going to walk you through an example workflow. Like many people, I often start my day by checking email on my phone. You probably know that Monday morning feeling when you first think about all the things that you have to get done that week, it can be overwhelming. Outlook helps by providing suggestions to keep me focused. As I begin to look through my email, I notice my daily briefing, which is a personalized and actionable email I receive from Cortana to help me prepare for my day. As I scroll down, I see my upcoming meetings with AI powered suggestions for documents that may be helpful to review in advance. Intelligence and Outlook has also detected and listed commitments or pending requests from prior emails that I may want to follow up on like this one, which I can mark as completed. I can also add these tasks to to do or set a reminder for later. And Outlook makes it easy to book focus time so I can get my work done without interruptions. One of my follow ups is to finish a paper that I've been preparing. I'm going to resume work on that in Word for the Web. Now, you might be familiar with my good friend editor, which for many years has helped me with things like spelling and grammar, but I often spend time rewriting sentences to find the most concise, clear way to convey my message. I also spend time trying to ensure that my language is inclusive, so it's accommodating for all my readers. Luckily, editor is evolving into a full fledged writing assistant. It allows you to focus on the content, the story you want to tell, while it takes care of the cleaning up and bringing out your best writing. Let me show you. In the document I need to work on in Word for the Web, I simply click on the editor icon to open the editor pane. Right away, you can see it's calculating the editor score. Depending on what you're writing, you may want to use more formal or casual language, and you can actually change that setting so editor gives you more relevant recommendations. I can choose formal, professional, or casual. I'm going to leave it set to formal for this paper since it's for my leadership team meeting. Now I can make typical corrections like spelling and grammar. I'll go through and update some of those. You'll notice the editor score increasing as I do that since I'm reviewing more of editor's suggestions. Then you can see this list of refinements, which provides several ways that I can further improve my document. Now, I often struggle with trimming down my writing to help my reader focus on my message, so I love using the suggestions under conciseness. Inclusivity is really important. I want my message to be relevant and appropriate for everyone in my audience. Under inclusivity, I see recommendations on language I can change to make my language more inclusive, in this case, gender neutral. Now, like me, you probably use a variety of sources when you write. Editor's similarity checker helps ensure that I'm citing sources for any external information I'm using. It looks like I forgot to attribute this sentence to its source, and editor makes it simple for me to add in a citation like this. We're all working on various tasks throughout the day, and that often means switching devices and the ways that we interact with those devices. Depending on where you are, you may want to move to a tablet device and use inking to continue editing. You can use your digital pen or finger to make common edits with gestures. Under the draw tab, I'll select the action pen in Word. Now, if you're new to intelligent pens, just open the help tab so you can see what's available. 
For example, I can scribble to delete a block of text and use a caret symbol to insert new text. And I can quickly format text by circling it. Voila! Now I want to add some concrete insights to my paper. To do this, I'm going to open an Excel spreadsheet my colleague sent me showing company expenses. There are about 4,500 rows of data here spanning several years. Now, whether you're an Excel pro or more of a beginner, you likely agree it can be difficult to look at data like this and get a basic understanding about what is going on right away. By clicking on ideas in Excel, this AI powered tool automatically analyzes my data and generates a series of recommendations on insights, trends, and interesting data points. Now let's say I have a specific question I'd like to answer using my data. I can go to ask a question about your data and ask a question using natural language. And that just means the way you would ask any other person the question. I don't need to know formal syntax or query language. As soon as I click there, you'll see some suggested questions that Ideas provides. But I'm just going to type in the one that I have in mind that's going to help me with my paper. How many categories and types are there? Now I can see there are six categories and 14 distinct types. OK, so now I want to know which category has the highest spend. Oh, it's people. That's interesting. I wonder how this compares to the other categories. So I'm going to type spend by category. Now I see a bar chart comparing spend across all categories. OK, I'd like a table that shows what each team spends on the category people. So I'm going to ask percentage of spend by team for people as table. Interesting. Engineering is definitely the main spender. And finally, I'd like to find out which month has the highest spend. So I'm going to ask spend by month in 2016. Perfect. I can see total spend broken down by month. All of these questions are fully insertable, allowing me to continue exploring or share whenever I'm ready. Now I want to show you something relatively new to Excel for the web that enables you to visualize data and better understand and communicate insights. I'll move over to the insert tab where I usually go to insert charts. Now I can ask for a chart recommendation. When I click on recommended charts, I see a set of nicely formatted charts created automatically for me. I can insert any of these and I'll get a nicely formatted chart with a descriptive title and I can continue working on my data. As my data changes, I can refresh this analysis to see up to date information. Now, if you're new to Excel or you haven't used pivot tables in a while, you may have to learn or relearn how to use them to explore your data. Now Excel helps with that too. When I click insert pivot table, I'm presented with many different ways to summarize my data as a pivot table, any of which I can quickly insert and then play around with. I'm someone that learns by tinkering with things, so this is a great way for me to figure out how they work. And like before, I might need to transition to a different device, whether it's to get comfy on the couch or just take a break from the keyboard. I can use inking to continue to edit in Excel. I'm going to do that now as I continue to edit my spreadsheet. Under the draw tab, I'll select the action pen in Excel. Oops, I need to correct this budget number. I can simply ink over it with the correct number. And there you go. Now I need to add a number for London. You'll see ink editor recognizes the pound sterling symbol. Another way to correct numbers is to cross them out to delete them and then write new numbers in. I love that it recognizes the different symbols, not to mention my handwriting. Like in Word, I can use quick gestures to quickly format text by circling and formatting. I can also select groups of cells to quickly do an equation like sum. Now that I've gained some insights from my data, I'm going to return to my Word document. As you go through your day, you might find times when you need to stretch your legs or maybe you think better when you're moving around or maybe inspiration strikes while you're cooking dinner. Dictation in Word is there for you and it's on mobile. 
Now with voice commands, I don't have to worry about being away from my keyboard. I can focus on the content of the document rather than going back and forth between my phone and my keyboard to format text. Let me show you. I'm using the Office app to edit my Word doc. To start, I simply tap the microphone icon to start dictating. New line, regional plans, underline that, New line, North America focus group testing begins in December 2020 in the following cities, colon, start numbered list, Atlanta, Georgia. Next line, Chicago, Illinois. Next line, Seattle, Washington. Exit list. The project goal is to complete product evaluation within the month with a 75% satisfaction rating, period. New line, estimated cost for this project in the greater Seattle, bold last word, area is around $55,000 per study group, period. Add comment need to verify this number with the team. Show help. As you can see, I don't have to interrupt my dictation to go back to the keyboard. Voice commands recognizes my formatting and editing commands, and I can even leave a comment using only my voice. Now, when you need to, you can check out all the voice commands in the help section. I love the flexibility that dictation with voice commands provides me as I move through my day. Now I'm back at my desk and I realize I want to add some quotes to my document to get my point across. I captured audio from interviews that I did recently with a small focus group of customers. Now you might do similar research or interviews or meetings where you want to capture everything that's said, but you also want to focus on who you're talking to. Transcribing audio recordings can take hours or you might need to use a transcription service and have to juggle between multiple docs or apps. With transcribe in Word, you don't have to spend all that extra time and energy. You can easily upload audio and see the transcript right in the side pane of Word. Let me show you. In Word for the Web, I click on the Dictate dropdown to find Transcribe. Now you can see the Start Recording button where I can record and transcribe right in Word. So if I'm doing a live interview, I can just click on this and I'm good to go. Now in this case, I have a recording that I did previously that I want to upload. So I select Upload Audio and I choose the file I want. It's great because I can record with my phone or some other app and I can still upload and transcribe in Word with any WAVE, MP3, MP4, or M4A file. Now I can see my whole transcript. It even distinguishes between speakers, saving my brain and my patience from the decoding work. I can go to any part of the recording and play it back just like this. There were also so many small components and it was also really annoying to open. I even gave myself a cut trying to rip open one of the hard plastic parts. I'm so sorry about your experience. We'll make a note of that and follow. And if I want to change the identification of the speaker to something more relevant, or if there's an error in the transcript, I can edit it. Also, I can pull quotes into my document with the click of a button. This saves me a lot of time and helps make my paper stronger. Once you're finished with the underlying work, you'll want to make sure to tell your story powerfully. You may only have a short amount of time to communicate with your colleagues or customers or partners, so you want to make sure your story is clear and compelling. I'm going to show you how AI in Office apps helps you do this quickly and easily. I'm almost done with my paper. Now I want to ensure the content is consistently formatted and that the overall documents look and feel is right for my readers. Normally, I would spend way too much time tweaking formatting and making sure all my titles and headings and sections are consistent. But with the new designer in Word, I can make my paper look great within seconds. Designer in Word helps by automatically detecting formatting inconsistencies and by offering a set of document themes that can be easily applied to a document. In my document, there are two formatting issues. First, my headings are in different font families and different font sizes. Second, 
my body text paragraph is slightly too large. Let me show you how Designer works. First, I can address the formatting inconsistencies by clicking on this button. Designer automatically fixes my formatting, but I'm still in control because the blue diamonds show me where the changes were made so that I can easily keep or undo the changes. In this case, Designer fixed the two issues I pointed out before, and I'll keep those changes. Another thing Designer changed was realigning a quote I had pulled out. I still want that to be centered, but I can easily just undo the suggested fix. Now I want to make a final polish to the document by applying one of the Designer styles. I like this style. Let's try another one though. This one looks okay as well. Ooh, this one looks fun, but probably too casual for this paper. Okay, let's go back to this one. That looks good. Designer helped me quickly fix and format, saving me time and energy. Now I can send this paper out to my colleagues with the confidence that they'll be able to clearly understand my story. Designer in Word is just rolling out now, so be on the lookout for this experience by the end of the year. Now that I have my paper done and ready to go, I can move on to working on my presentation. I want to present the best possible version of myself and tell my story in a compelling way so that my team understands the main points. With Designer in PowerPoint, I can quickly and easily create beautiful slides to tell my story. When I open Designer, right away I can see suggested themes in the right-hand pane. Now, these suggestions change as I type in the title. For instance, if I type in meeting, I get different themes. You'll notice some of them have movement like this cup of coffee, which really captures my audience's attention. Now I type international updates. Oh, I like this one. So I'm going to choose that and now I can continue editing my slide. You'll notice Designer is constantly running in the background, updating its suggestions based on my input. It's like my personal design assistant. It helps me make my content look great and saves me from fussing around with everything too much. Have you ever been in the middle of building a deck and thought, I've done this slide before? It's like slide deja vu. PowerPoint saves me time because I can just reuse slides that I've already made. I click Insert, Reuse Slides, and search for a project I did recently. Once I click on the presentation, I simply insert whichever slides I want. So I'm going to grab a few. OK, now I want to spiffy up my agenda slides, so I just go back to Designer and take a look at the suggestions. I like this one, so I'll just click on that. For my next slide, I like how this suggestion shows the flow of work, so I'm going to pick this one. But you'll notice I have other options, so depending on your situation, you can choose whatever works best. Then I'm on to the goals for this, and I would really like some visuals for emphasis, so I'm going to pick a suggestion with icons. The great thing about Designer is I can easily tailor it to my situation. So if I don't like an icon, I can just choose another. Now on my milestone slide, I could leave it as is, but it looks a little overwhelming with all the dates. Using Designer, I can easily make it way more clear and visually appealing. So within a matter of seconds, I was able to build out part of my presentation and it looks clear and compelling so that my content will be the main focus. The day of the presentation is here and I have a great paper and slide deck, but I always get nervous speaking in front of colleagues. So I use Presenter Coach to practice. Presenter Coach is like a constructive friend giving you immediate feedback to help you improve your speaking skills. Even if you don't get nervous, practicing with Presenter Coach can help you improve your speaking skills so that you convey your story in a clear and compelling way that will engage your audience. Let's give it a try. Under the Slideshow tab, I click Rehearse with Coach. The deck immediately goes into presentation mode so I can start rehearsing. Now Coach is on and it will listen to me as I present and provide real-time feedback. So I'm going to start. In today's meeting, we are going to review project milestones and look at the markets we will conduct research in. Ah, OK, Coach is suggesting I should vary my pitch. This will help keep my audience members more interested in what I'm saying, as well as emphasize the important parts of the presentation. 
Then we are going to discuss the exciting key opportunities we have this quarter as well as last quarter's performance results. Um, moving on to um, the project scope. Now you can see coaches helping me curb one of the most prolific presentation problems, those pesky filler words. By decreasing filler words, I sound more confident and my message will be more powerful. So I'm going to work on that. OK, back to practicing the presentation. First, we will implement aspects of our branding for customer recognition and continuity. Now Coach is encouraging me to summarize my slide rather than read it. This is key to providing my audience with supplemental information rather than what they could get if they just looked at the deck on their own. As I keep practicing, Coach will also give me pointers on things like sensitive phrases and pacing. At the end, I receive a rehearsal report which provides a summary of my practice session. I can easily check things like pace, use of filler words and pitch variation. Sensitive phrases shows me language I may want to change to ensure inclusivity in my presentation, like changing you guys to you. And it even provides speech refinements, in this case, suggestions for using more concise language. I can practice as many times as I want with Coach, and it gives me confidence that I will deliver a powerful story at my upcoming meeting. Now that I am practiced and confident, it's time to deliver my presentation. Again, my mission is to ensure that everyone at the meeting understands the content that I'm trying to convey, and of course that everyone feels included. To do this, I'm going to use live presentations in PowerPoint. Live presentations enables each person in the meeting to join via a short link or QR code. They can join on their computer, phone, or tablet. As the presenter, I can see how many people have joined. As I start the presentation, this is how it appears for my audience members. Live presentations will begin captioning as I present. Each person who has joined can change the captioning to the language they prefer. So if I have an audience who speaks several different languages, each person can see what I'm saying in their chosen language at the same time. I'm showing how it appears on mobile in the left hand corner. Good morning. Welcome to our international team meeting. I should also say good afternoon and good evening to all our team members joining us from around the world. Today, I'm happy to share our upcoming global launch updates. Are you all excited to hear this? Often when I'm in a meeting, especially online, it's difficult to gauge audience's interest. I love that live presentations enables each audience member to give reactions via emojis throughout the presentation. This helps me decide where I need to add more information or pause for questions. Here you can see my audience is excited for the updates. Yay. At the end of the presentation, each audience member can provide feedback. This helps me ensure my audience understood the presentation and also gives me feedback to improve on for next time. I'll receive the input in an email within a few minutes of completing the presentation. From start to finish, Office is here to help you focus on the heart of your story, provide flexible ways to create it, and help you tell your story powerfully. Now, we know that work rarely happens in isolation. Most of you are collaborating with many others throughout the course of your day. So please check out our other session, Office Apps and Teams, enabling virtual collaboration for the future of our hybrid work environment. And for more information on the experiences shown today, please check out these links. You can start using most of these experiences today in Outlook, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Thank you so much.